Atlanta Motorsports Park, which is a fantastic track in Georgia, designed by Herman Tilke, famous for his F1 designs. So my first mission is to learn what direction the track goes in. My second mission is to select the ultimate track car, and they're gonna let me drive whatever I like. I'm Ben Collins, been racing for Praga for the last two seasons, so I know the Praga R1 fairly well. It's my first time here though at Atlanta Motorsports Park. And I will say it's an incredibly challenging track. I had no idea what I was walking into when I got to this place. The whole track pretty much is blind. So the line here is critical. All the corners are interconnected. You have to know where you're going before you get there. So it takes a little bit of time to get used to. I mean, obviously I'm a little bit biased. I've been racing one of these for the last two years. Got a 24 hour race in one at Zolder. And I'm pretty attached to them, but with good reason. I just love racing these things, but taking it here to the US, getting out onto these tracks, is so exciting. Because it's so different. The car is familiar, the track is new. <laughs> but it loves it. 660 kilograms, 385 horsepower. And it's eager to please. <laughs> I love this car. It's just so lively. It's just all business. It's like being in another time zone with a car like this. It's really suited to this track, which is kind of like a roller coaster. This is my first time here at Atlanta Motorsports Park. It's an eye-opener. Uh, I, I, I should have done more research before I got here. I thoroughly recommend anyone who comes here for the first time to really deep dive into the video footage because most of the corners here are completely blind. They're long radius. Um, they're all interconnected. So the line is really critical. It's a thrilling lap around this place. Really good balance of low speed corners and these technical linked corners. which I really like. The R1, you can throw a lot of speed into slow banked corners and it laps it up. Once you get into it though, it's a lot of fun and um, you've got to be very committed. There's a, you know, a lot of corners where you've got to tilt in with a lot of speed. Um, with downforce cars, the faster you go, the more downforce you get. So um, in the R1, that's made it, you know, again, another level of enjoyment. You're immediately sort of in the zone, in the roller coaster, um, flying around. And this, this track in particular is very well suited, like a lot of tracks in the States. There's a mix of, of bumpy courses that are converted from airfields and these bespoke circuits um, that, are, that are very challenging. It's just such a rewarding car because it's kind of like a mix between a GT car and a Le Mans prototype. It looks like a prototype drive like one, you can really dig late on the brakes into these corners, but <laughs> it's a little bit more lively coming out of the corners on the power. Uh, R1 really excels in conditions where there's, um, you know, you've got to really rely on the brake pedal to scrub speed. It's, you can brake phenomenally late with that car, so it's, it's great for digging into the pedal. Really quick direction changes um, really suit the car as well. Very nuanced track this. There's probably more than one way around a couple of these different sequences of corners. You've got to pick one that suits your style. Whether you want to be the late breaker or carry momentum or try and do both is up to you. All I know is this little R1, I think, is starting to 
trying to make waves here and I think that it's soon going to have the company of a lot of our ones rattling around this track. With slick tyres and wings, you can really be late on the brakes and you can make the most of these, um, the carousel and the chicanes here that are interconnected. So um, I'm really enjoying it. It's a, it's a very busy lap, especially in an R1. The, the straight suddenly becomes quite short because you're flying down it at nearly 140 miles an hour, but it's a ton of fun. Uh, every lap in one of these is always a little bit different. You're just always trying to find that tiny edge to just carry it all the way around the track. But it is a dance. You can see that from the steering inputs. You have to really, really juggle this thing on a fine line and keep, if the tail's not working, then you're not trying hard enough.